All right, so part two, we're back with Alex. We wanted to finish up uh, all of the technical analysis, but wanted to quickly give you the trade that we made today. So uh, again, being short bias, we noticed that a lot of the times the biggest sell-offs come at the very end of the day. And so uh, with the market uh, topping out earlier, uh, we saw opportunity to go ahead and take advantage of that. So uh, Earlier today in the Discord, I was really rooting for SPY to bounce because I knew that once SPY bounced back into these resistance levels uh, that we've previously seen, the 416s, uh, even the 412s, 412 area, you can see this this has been a uh, this has been support as well, uh, pre-market, and so and I don't know how far it goes back. Let me look at the 15, see where we're at on that. Yeah, so even even right here, 412 has been a pretty strong level. Uh, come on. Let it go. All right. It's been a pretty strong level. And you see this range, and, and we see that we got below it briefly, temporarily, but we bounced back into this channel. So, again, um, I missed uh, a lot of it because as soon as I stopped looking at the market, then we go we flush from 415 all the way down to 409 uh and then went down to 407 so uh no worries again we were looking for this bounce and of course spy rally we, we were right we were rooting for spy to rally because we wanted this to rally into this resistance to sell off at the end of the day so we got in the uh the 410 which 14 is right here. The 410 um, puts were uh, seven cents. We got filled, and then uh, I believe we triple topped. This was, I think, with 10 minutes to go. Uh, with 13 minutes to go, we got filled right here. And so the next candlestick uh, started the, the sell off. Uh, we finally got into the 409s. Um, it bounced a little bit, and then we closed our position. So from seven cents to uh, thirty-three cents, it actually went to forty-five cent temporarily, and then uh, you know we got stopped out. We like to set stops because um, I like just I like to lock in my profits just in case it continues to move. I don't like to sell and take profits necessarily uh, when when the stock is moving my direction because I like to give it the room it needs in case it has more. So, just wanted to uh, share that. And again, we're always looking for these kind of moves. You can go all the way back to, um, I mean, you can go all the way back in every zero day expiration. Um, and I'm just gonna give you my philosophy on trading SPY, especially intraday. There's always gonna be a reversal, okay? So, again, the reversal was really quick today. We go from 416, all the way down to, to 409. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll see spy selling completely off, okay? And then, the, again, this reversal from 397 all the way to 388. Um, and I'll go back even further. Uh, when you see spy, um, a, a lot of times you'll see spy, the big red candle. Will, will appear in the first five minutes and then you'll see a reversal so in the morning always expect spy to see a reversal stay away from the midday chop you know stay stay away from this this choppy area okay we always like that because look this is a perfect example we got we, we got a huge burst up and then a reversal to the downside yesterday we get a huge sell-off to the downside and then a reversal right at 8 55 9 o'clock uh all the way back up from 4 oh from 409 all the way up to 413 okay and then even even into the 416s so again when you when you're trading spy be sure not to get caught up number one don't think don't think just because it sells off in the first five minutes is going to keep falling it's going to reverse and don't think if it runs that it's not going to reverse and go lower at some point and then again, just stay away from the midday chop. Scalp the morning, scalp the open, stay away from the midday chop, and then scalp 
uh, the end of the day if, you, if you're on zero day uh, expirations, uh, just like we did today. Uh, you know, you get you're, you're getting just as much money from here all the way to here uh, as you are right here because the premiums are so low. Like I said, we paid seven cents uh, three or four hours ago. That same strike price would have cost me four or five times as much. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you again, Alex, so you can tell us more about what you were explaining in part one. You are on. All right. Yep, we see. I see it again. So just kind of uh, to continue on on what I was saying, uh, just to just to keep an eye out, uh, volume is obviously one of the most important and, you know indicators. Um, essentially, like it is what uh, you know kind of the most popular. But um, taking a look at your volume, um, what we want to compare is the effort versus the results, really. Um, so how much movement is happening versus how much actual volume we are getting, like how much, how much volume does it take for this candle to move up and what volume does it take for a candle to move down. So as you can see, around starting, I guess, probably from, from the end of this wave right here, that the volume kind of mellows out. So we'd like to consider that um, Know, in the most simplest way, uh, an area of accumulation. Um, you know, after a huge drop, we did have a couple, of, a couple of kicks down here. It was pretty, very aggressive starting from this point right here. Um, there is a large influx of volume, um, but also, also large drops. So we see that the volume kind of mellows out. We stay within these these ranges, and we kind of just uh, accumulate and see a turn in the trend here, uh, starting from this from this peak now. So uh, it's an important thing to note after a huge upside or downside move, uh, keep an eye out on, on the volume to see the, uh, what's going on. It, it, it tells a lot more than, than than what you actually think. So for the for for the targets that I have up here. Uh, just to kind of expand as well, I do see uh, a little bit more top than some potential upside to this box. Um, if we do reach this box, uh, which is the 0.5 retracement on the top here, or the 0.3 retracement of this larger wave, um, I do believe we see some mild downside to either test a support. So just to kind of draw it out briefly, reach this target and then possibly test the support or a previous resistance zone. And then to continue on this, since, we, since the current trend is on the downside, uh, I think we would most likely retrace to, I believe it was around this number, so that's that's kind of like the a bullish scenario in this case. Mm -hmm. um, it would form a larger double top on the on a larger time scale. Um, it would, would kind of be be testing this this upside uh, trend line of, of, over here. Um, in the most <laughs> bearish scenario, which could also be you know a huge probability, is that after we test this this uh, this zone right here. Just see a continued downside and we break this bottom this next line. So it is important to note uh, when the volume mellows out um, after a huge down downside move, it can be considered some accumulation if it moves up uh, relatively quickly and there is also a mellow in volume. Mm -hmm. um, then that could be kind of a distribution area that where potentially see some more downside. So what would kind of be telling of the direction here would be to 
is what zones we respect and how much volume we see. If we see a lot of selling pressure around this area, then the downside is definitely most probable. If we see a large increase in uh, bullish volume, then we could potentially be testing the upper trend line here for then a kind of a continuation of the downside because the larger trend is is bearish and we do want to still kind of play that. Right. Uh, so yeah, as far as that goes, that's those would be the, the two options that I see right now. Anything you want to add? Like yeah. This? Yeah, I think uh, I think I think uh, just keep in mind these channels are wide, uh, and they can they can play out in, in a lot of ways. I see your I see your um, your uh, your price prediction in the box, and so a lot of times I've made I've made those price predictions, and I've hit them uh, a week later than I anticipated. So you know a, a lot of times. Most people are normally right. If if you do your homework and you're actually paying attention to the market, you're normally going to be right. You're just right at the wrong time a lot of the times. And so, you know, especially trading options, that's where they get you. Uh, so if you can I always tell people to buy as close to the money as possible as, as and give yourself as much time as possible. And so um, we, uh, we we're looking at if you look at that channel, if you look at the upper channel right now, uh, you know, it may not it may not even test the upper channel until much much later. You know, if if it tests the upper channel, so if you go all if you go back into if you go back and look at March, it does test all the way up to the upper channel. Um, you know where it says C on the on the C this in the C area, and so once it pulls back down uh, all the way to the A the next A area. Uh, you know, it didn't it didn't test the bottom of that channel yet. It went back up to the B and then we go and then we get a retracement all the way back down to the red A uh, before we start trying to continue upward. So uh, we may we may end up testing this the this upper channel, but it could take a lot of times and 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 stocks trade channels are within channels. So we're trading a channel within a channel. You know, it's not just going to be. Yeah. The upper trend down to the lower trend. Upper trend, no, there's 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 upper and lower trends within this this big range. It's, it's what a lot of people uh, have to have to have to really um, accept. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have uh, to add. Uh, we'll have to talk about volume uh, another time because that's really interesting. Um, I know. Uh, Support resistance trend lines, but I don't. I haven't been as deeply uh, uh, analyzing volume as 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 uh, some other people do, and I and I I try to get better all the time. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll have to make a volume video and uh, and just really talk about volume supply, demand, and price action uh, as it relates to it. So, but yeah, that's all I got for today. Uh, I guess bearish channel there. I guess you could call this almost a, a bullish rally within a bearish channel. You know, it's it's, uh, it's interesting and, and and you're right. Like the the time frames are are probably the, the, one of the hardest things to kind of get right. Uh, so yeah, you could be right just at a wrong time, and that and that definitely does does not just me personally. I know a lot of people it, it does mess them up. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you if you had some time. I did I did make a trade this morning. It was around the range um, that you were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, played a call. I didn't know if you wanted to go through that real quick. Yeah, we're uh, we got about thirty seconds. Uh, oh, so we okay. keep I break it up into fifteen <laughs> increments. So yeah, well let's 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 do this uh, let's do this again uh, possibly. End of the week recap, or uh, and we'll, or maybe we'll even do a preview for next week, Monday or Tuesday, and just uh, and just talk about some levels and some uh, some 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 support and resistance levels and some uh, some predictions that we have. So, uh, pretty yeah, much, absolutely. yeah. Thanks, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we're pretty much out of time, but ho hopefully we gave some value. Hopefully people can make a little money because of this, and we will see you on the flip side.